Welcome to another video from Fivespire. My name is Pia. Today will be the first video in an online series where we explore the command line interface, using it and getting comfortable with it. Today we're going to start off with a very basic lesson for those who have little or no experience using a command line interface. Before we begin, I want to list reasons why the command line interface is still relevant in today's computing world. First reason, especially relevant for a systems administrator, is that the computer you're working on may not even have graphics capabilities. You're stuck with a command line, especially relevant with virtual machines and remote servers. The second reason is for convenience and productivity. There's many tasks that it's trivial to be done through a command line interface. For example, changing the extension on a bunch of files. That's much easier done through a command line than through a typical GUI. The third is troubleshooting and repairing. Many of the programs that you would use to troubleshoot errors on your machine are going to be built from the ground up to display in a text-based environment, especially reading logs and what they call grepping through logs, meaning searching through logs and finding the relevant log entries regarding the particular problem you're trying to solve. Okay, enough of that. Let's uh, go play with the Linux terminal. For this video, I'm using Fedora 25 with the GNOME 3 desktop environment. And as you can see, I already have a terminal window up. And for that, all you need to do is launch the terminal program. Unless you're running a KDE desktop environment, then you search for the program called console. Two words are really interchangeable. For folks who are running the terminal program for the first time, you probably want to do something with the terminal colors. Especially if you're going to be looking at it for a long time, you don't want anything too harsh like black on white or white on black. So let's just change the preferences. So we'll just go into the preferences window and go to profiles. This is probably more or less the same in every terminal program. Select a profile. Um, you can go to edit. Just find the colors. And for this particular screencast, I'm using the system steam because I enjoy it. It's easier in the eyes. But if you had something stark like black on white or white on black, I suggest you at least have an off white or an off black because if you're looking at the screen for a long time, you can get some bad eye straining. So you can play around for a bit, but and you're going to find people are in their camp of a dark or light theme. I particularly like dark. So I'm going to go back to my dark theme color. Okay, now we should be looking at a blank terminal window. And the terminal window actually runs a shell program called bash, which stands for the born again shell. A shell is a user interface to the operating system. It interprets your commands and launches other programs for you. In a new shell session, it should be mainly blank other than the command prompt. The command prompt gives the user context. In this particular case, there's three pieces of inf information. Um, the first is the login name, in this case PD, at the host name of the actual computer you're working on, so Fivespire, and the tilde character, which in bash represents the user's home directory. Let's type in our first command. We'll just list what's in my home directory. So for that, you just type in ls, short for list, and hit enter to execute. And as you can see, I have a few directories and photos. I have a desktop, documents, and downloads folder, along with a few pictures. That was a fairly simple command. And the ls command actually takes in options, meaning you can modify behavior. So if I wanted to know more about the files and directories in my home directory, I can list by long form, type in ls dash l, and the dash specifies this is an option that we want to pass. ls dash l, and then hit enter to execute. And as you can see, we have more information instead of listing my files and directories in a single line. I get a few more 
information about it. I get the file size, who owns it, and the date of time that they were created. You can also specify multiple options per command. Um, LS also has a dash capital S, which means sort by size. So if we want to do the long form and sort by size, we type in LS dash L capital S. And you have to remember lowercase s and a capital S are two different commands. So if you have to make sure that you have the proper case. And we just hit enter. And as you can see, my PDF book is the largest, followed by the directories, which are minimal size. You can also type in ls-l-s to specify multiple options, but that's sort of a waste because you save keystrokes by combining them. And when you start using the command line more, there's a pride in saving keystrokes. The last thing we need to talk about regarding commands are command arguments. If you notice with the list command, it was only displaying what was in my current directory, but what if I wanted to see what was in my documents directory? To do that, you would have to pass it the documents path. So you can, you'd can you have to type in ls documents forward slash. And then you can see that I actually have a few text files in there. You can actually specify multiple directories or paths. So I can type in ls documents again forward slash and let's say if I wanted to look at my pictures so type in the pictures folder so now I have ls and two directory paths so just hit enter and as you can see it displays what's in my documents and pictures folder you can also do the same thing with the options you can pass options and then the documents folder and pictures path. And as you can see now it's showing the files and documents in long form sorted by size. You can change the order between arguments and options. Bash is smart enough to interpret that, but I wouldn't recommend that. Not all commands would support that. And to be honest, it looks fairly funny. So let's just do it. I'll show you that you can do it ls documents slash picture slash dash ls and as you can see it ran it no problem but i won't recommend running commands that way because when you're dealing with command history you're usually changing the arguments instead of the options so it's much easier if the arguments are last but that's for another lesson Speaking of which, it's uh, probably a good time to end our first lesson here. I know it was fairly basic, but for any newbies coming into the command line, you did learn quite a bit. Uh, terminal, the shell, the difference between the terminal and shell. I also explain a bit of the command prompt and running programs with options and arguments and specifying multiple options and arguments. So I hope you enjoyed that first lesson and please subscribe to my channel for further videos regarding Linux and systems administration.